bad objection number five. If the universe began to exist, then it must have come from nothing. That is quite plausible, since there are no constraints on nothing. And so nothing can do anything, including producing the universe. <laughs> this objector seems to be hopelessly confused about the use of the word nothing. When it is rightly said that nothing preceded the universe, one doesn't mean that something preceded it and that was nothing. We mean that it was not preceded by anything. Reifying negative terms has been the butt of jokes as old as Homer's story of the Cyclops and Odysseus. Uh, just imagine, if you will, the following dialogue between two people discussing the Second World War. Nothing stopped the German advance from sweeping across Belgium. Oh, well, that's good. I, I'm glad it was stopped. But it wasn't stopped. But you said nothing stopped it. Well, that's right. Nothing stopped it. Well, that's what I said. It was stopped, and it was nothing that stopped it. No, 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 I meant that it wasn't stopped by anything. Well, then why didn't you say so in the first place? The objector, in thinking that nothing produced the universe, seems to be guilty of exactly the same sort of mistake. Nothingness has no pop properties, no powers. It, it, it isn't even anything. And therefore, it is wholly misconceived to say that it produced the universe. To say that the universe was caused by nothing is to say that the universe had no cause. It wasn't caused by anything. That is surely metaphysically absurd. Out of nothing, nothing comes. This is a classical principle of metaphysics that goes back to at least Plato. In his classic dialogue, the Timaeus, Plato wrote the following. We must, in my opinion, begin by distinguishing between that which always is and never becomes from that which is always becoming and never is. Everything that becomes or changes must do so owing to some cause, for nothing can come to be without a cause. As for the world, call it that, or cosmos, or any other name acceptable to it, we must ask about it the question one is bound to ask to begin with about anything, whether it has always existed and had no beginning, or whether it has come into existence and started from some beginning. The answer is that it has come into being, and what comes into being or changes must do so, we said, owing to some cause. And thus the first premise of the Kalam cosmological argument is one of the oldest and most widely recognized truths of metaphysics.